Who? Radio. Look. They're coming. Fitzy and Whipper. Their focus is extremely short. How have I even got a job here? On Nova. Welcome to the podcast. We are joined by a special guest, Whipper, from his own show. Hey, guys. Love the podcast. Um, good to be here. And can I tell you, I've never been more excited about what's coming up on a podcast than I am right now. Well, tell us what you're most excited about. The start will be huge. The middle and towards the second part of the second half will be massive. And then we go out with a bang. Bang. Well, we start with Limna Granger. That's what we I We do. Meant. So, yes, tip, mm-hmm. correct. Thank you. What's in the middle? In the middle, we're talking about, do you have a driving habit? It, that you probably shouldn't. Fitzy's got a great story. I hope he does. Good content. Yep, sure. And how are we getting out with a bang? We are going out with Ben Crow, who is the... No, incorrect. On another, incorrect. We have got Heidi Klum on the show Not t- quite. tomorrow. No. Um, Jason Derulo, the man himself, <laughs> will be joining us tonight. That's not happening. Okay, no. what is what it? What about Hyundai Monday? Hyundai Monday, of course. <laughs> Something a bit more simple. Fitzy and Whipper. Exciting days if you're the kids start to make their way back to school. Relieved parents and also tomorrow the kids go back as well. Ryan James Fitzgerald has departed the show. Huey's first mm-hmm. day, year seven. So exciting. What at a the big, big campus kid. at the big school. Yeah. I just saw a photo BJ put on Instagram with little Huey in his oh, uniform. And his hair's all done. He looks so handsome. I in remember his uniform. my first day of year seven. One of the bigger kids hit me in the back of the head with an apple. Uh, welcome. Anyway. The start of tragedy. <laughs> that was a great. That was a great start. Why don't we call Fitzy to see how it's going? I wonder if he's mm-hmm. emotional this morning as they drop Huey off. It's called the big rig. Hello. Uh, Ryan James. Buddy. It's Fitzy Whipper Hi, Show. How, how, I'm a little bit nervous. My first day of school today, and um, I'm just freaking out. No, it's not your day, and first things first, you're not in the running for 50k Fridays. But <laughs> we just wanted to check in to see how Huey's going. Very big day for Huey, and a lot of the kids going back to school today. Yeah, mate, I've just picked him up. He's in the car with me right now. He's um, in his uniform, and we're just about to drop him off at the Ramwick Army Barracks. So <laughs> he's, he's really going to enjoy military school, I think. He's off to Pucker Um <laughs> hey, This is exciting. I mean, Huey, does Huey have an answer if one of the kids that he doesn't know says, hey, wasn't your dad on Big Brother? No, oh, no. Actually, well, why don't you talk to him? If he's here, he's here. I'll put him on. Yeah. All right. Hello. Huey. Hi, Huey. How are you doing, buddy? Good, thank you. You excited for today? Yeah. Are hey. you feeling yes, nervous? Have you, do you have you got all your books and do you know where your locker is? Yeah, well, I didn't feel nervous before, but now it's the day and I'm about 15 minutes away. I'm feeling oh. a little bit nervous. Oh, mate, those nerves are excitement. That's all it is, the excitement of what you're about to get into. You were telling me the other day, Huey, you haven't even been to the school yet, have you? Because, because of COVID, you couldn't even do a tour. Yeah, I haven't been... Well, I've been inside school, but I haven't been in the buildings. I've only been in the grass areas. Wow. Huey, one of the most crucial things for your first day at school too is to make sure you've got the right energy and that comes from your lunchbox. What's uh, what's for lunch today, mate? What's been packed? Well, uh, we have a cafeteria there, so we don't pack our lunches. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um... But, um I don't know. I don't know what we're going to have for lunch today. Okay, that's exciting. So do you know if you have any sport on today? Do you have to take any sports clothes along? We have or? to trial out for our sport. Right. Oh, try out. Jeez, PE got okay. tough, didn't it? What are we talking, running or footy or...? Um, so for well, th- after Rafa Nadal won a couple of million last night, I'm, I'm putting him in for tennis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tennis and golf for the real wins. Hey, Huey, did Dad or Mum give you anything just to sort of, you know, show you how much they love you on your big day or...? Sarah, we haven't given it to him yet. Oh. I'm waiting for my wife, who just keeps talking to everybody at the moment, to jump <laughs> back into the car because we do have a little gift for him and, and a few nice words. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I am. I'm getting a bit emotional now. I'm just thinking about it. He caught a bus before and it's weird because my little boy's growing up. It's really weird. I'm, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm getting really emotional. No, mate, I can understand it. And what a lead-in, too, to prepare him um, for school in Year 7 and the first day to fly to Tassie to see Midnight Oil um, and slam a couple of beers and sing along to the boys. Yeah, no, it was a, we had a good weekend with Lenny on the weekend, didn't we, Dewey? Yeah. Oh, all right, let's do this. All right, okay. you got it, buddy? Everything all right? Yeah, everything's all right. We'll be okay. We'll be. I'll, uh, I'll drop him off and I'll be back soon. And to all the other kids out there as well, good luck on your first day today. All right, mate. Good, good luck, luck. Huey. See you, Huey.
See ya. Bye. See you, mate. Have Bye, fun. Buddy. Have fun. It's one thing you got to do. You won't get an apple in the back of the head. That was just me. I think I was mouthing <laughs> off early. Learned the lesson very quickly. No, you didn't. Uh, you made a career out of it. <laughs> All right, we're going to check in with Fitz after the drop off. Also, Lynn McGranger, Irene from Home and Away. Um, Home and Away is back tonight, which is great. She joins us next. Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to what if it. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. Exciting. It kicks off tonight. Home and Away returns to our screens. Your little beauty, Channel 7, guys. She's been there for 30 years and we love her to pieces. Lynn McGranger, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, guys. How are you? Yeah, we're good, Lynn. We just spoke to Fitzy. He's dropping off Huey for his first day in Year 7. A big oh, day so for the school drop-off. Kids go back today and tomorrow, even Wednesday. Uh, what about you, Lynn? When you started school or when you dropped your daughter off, was it emotional for you? Well, um, yes. Uh, it wasn't emotional for me to go to school. My mum kind of got rid of me when I was about two. Oh. Sent me off to preschool because okay. I was driving a crazy. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so I was at school, well, since since I was two. And then, uh, but I do remember my daughter um, going and, and Paul and I dropped her off. And, and uh, it, it wasn't too emotional because she'd been to childcare and been to preschool. Yeah. I think it's really hard for parents who who just suddenly, uh, you know, their child's gone. They haven't been to preschool or anything like that. But, um, yeah, Clancy took it in a, in a stride like she does most things. Love the name Clancy. L- Lynn, did you do anything embarrassing to, to Clancy when she was at school? I remember Mum would punish us sometimes by turning up really daggy music or chasing you out of the car in her pyjamas pretending you'd left something in the car. Were you that sort of mum? <laughs> No, darling. You didn't I go on home and away for 30 years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I think it was bad enough exactly that her mum was kind of on the telly oh. and all the time and, and the kids in the playground were like, oh, my God, your mum's on home and away and then would ask her questions and she would go, I don't know, I don't watch it. So, Are you kidding? Oh. She doesn't watch She's, no, Has she ever no, watched? Not really, no. Look, I think it's a bit like being a butcher and coming home and going... Right, let's fire up the Barbie. Exactly I'm going to carve same. up the lamb. <laughs> exactly the same. You know what I mean? Yep. Like she's grown up with it, and it's just like mum's job. Lynn, well, what, uh, what is the number one thing people ask you on the street when they go, oh, there's Irene, I'll go and ask. Yeah. What is the number well, one thing? I think what that, they usually say, do you, do you talk like Irene in real life? And I go, <laughs> what are you talking about, Charles? Mm-hmm. Of course I don't. Of course, fake girly. Um, and they they kind of look at me wryly, um, mm. and they uh, ask me, um, you know, do I get on with the cast? And I always right. say no because they're a bunch of idiots. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, yep, yep. <laughs> Ray Mar appreciates that one. Lim, what are you hoping happens to Irene this season? Oh, look, love. I just uh, love, Dal. I just really like where Irene's at. I like, I, I can do without the, the personal drama. Mm. I'm happy to just help out all the others going through whatever trauma, whatever sinkhole they're down, you know, <laughs> what, mm-hmm. whatever earthquake they're caught up in, yeah, sure. um, whatever emotional, personal trauma they're going through, I'm just happy to be there for them and to make them a cuppa. I'd, say, I'd like to see Lynn kick into some festival season gear uh, oh, yeah. where she goes a little bit hobo. Bit um, Coachella-esque. Yeah, bit Coachella. She starts sure. wearing minis and sort of fishnet, <laughs> um, fluoros, oh. and just, just goes a bit mad. Oh, I would love that. But, hey, you know what? A music festival in the Bay is a great idea. It's a great idea. To get some really cool people, yeah, you know. I'll come um, along. Cool. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I was thinking more of, you know, your... Uh, um, uh, what's her tones and I and oh, yeah. those kind oh, yeah. of people. Yeah, you're on it. But, She's not bad. Um, that's a great thing. And then, yeah, I think Irene could go a bit boho. That'd be nice. Um, Lynn, we need to ask about the beautiful Sam Frost. You know we're friends with her here, and, of course, she's quit home and away at the end of last year, so we won't see her in 2022. Have you spoken to Sam, or was it? how was it portrayed or, or informed to you that she wouldn't be returning? Oh, she spoke to me. And, and can I just say that the door is not closed. Great. She's, very much an open door. Sam needed to be with her family. Yep. And and they're down in Melbourne. 
And so uh, even, you know, there was there was some issues, of course, with, with getting vaccinated, but I'm here to tell you that she is double vaccinated now, possibly boosted as well. That's great. But she, she needed to be with her family, but the door is definitely open oh, for her good. to come back the way that she is um, currently, uh, like, gone from the bay. Right. Me, there is uh, plenty of room for her to come back, and I'm sure that as we speak, she is in negotiations with the producer. Oh, that would be great. That would be a relief. Yeah. But can yeah. you tell me, was there was it more than just the vaccination? Was, it, was there another issue or something? No, look, she missed her family. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for Sam, darling, but um, she... She really missed her family in Melbourne, and that's that's um, where she needed to be. Yeah, yeah. She's never made a secret of the fact that she does struggle with anxiety. Mm. Uh, that's out there for, and it's Absolutely. a great thing to make public. But uh, yeah, she needed to be with her family, and the producers, being clever and smart, and and certainly compassionate, said, "You you go and do what you need to do, Sam." The door is open for you to come back, and we would love you to come love back. That. Should do a neighbours crossover hmm? if she's down oh, there. Oh, good lord! No. I wish well, she could, <laughs> darling, but I don't. I don't think that that's. Oh, it might be, and you know, no, no disrespect to, to neighbours. Don't worry, then I was to bounce kidding. around a bit. I mean, we? we don't want to, We don't want to start a neighbours home and away war. That would no, get really no, bad, no, but... never, never. Um, well, that's great. That's good to know that the door's still open, and we might yeah. see Sam Frost back love in the bay. Sammy. Well, I, I, I hope so, and I'm in in touch with her constantly and uh, she is in a very good place at the moment. Right. Love it, Lynn. We'll catch up for some brownies soon. Oh, okay, darling. And listen, don't forget, Home and Away, 7 o'clock tonight. Back You've got it. Air. We love you, Lynn. Love you back. Bye, All Lynn. right. Kids back to school today, tomorrow and also Wednesday. So exciting and nervous time for kids, but also celebration for parents to think, finally, yes. <laughs> Get out of the house. Fitzy has had an emotional morning, dropping Huey off for the very first time in Year 7, the big school. How are you, buddy? You know what? There is there is that element of, yes, we finally get them out of the house, but, um, oh, God, we've just been in tears in the car. Aww. Like, BJ, BJ's a mess. Um, we've just dropped him off. His first day of high school today. But it's, you know what, see, I think there's a... You know, we, I feel like as a parent... And Whip, you can back me up here too. You feel like you're trying to mould your kids into the respectable, you know, people of the community. And the whole time you just feel like, don't do this, don't do that. And you're trying to mould them into the people that you want them to be. I think, you know, when I walked in, I, I just walked in into the school then. And as he walked off, I just went, you know what, like, he, we've done a good job in that respect. And that's what we wrote in this little card to him that, Mate, if you just be yourself, you're going to find friends, and it's going it's going to be okay. Oh, yeah, it'll be great. I get it. It'll Aww. be okay because you do put so much work, and it's yeah. kind of like you feel like you're letting him fly from the nest. But you know what? Any time that we spend with Huey, and especially Huey around my boys, I always make a point of telling Lisa just how well mannered oh, and kind and friendly yeah. both your boys are. They're magnificent kids. Well, it's it's funny. You just. You know what? That that's it. That's it. Look, the one time that you find out that your kids are, they do have manners and etiquette is when that when they stay over at a friend's house. That's when you find out from the other mm. parents. You go, oh my gosh, he's well mannered. And I feel like, you know, we're always like, don't do this and don't do that, or you're not doing this right. I think we've got to be more positive with him. But I just said to him, I said, mate, you are you you're a, a very humble, confident charismatic young man just go in there and and all you have to do is be yourself and you know put your hand up for everything that comes your way and you'll be fine so yeah, have fun oh, it's just another stage in your kid's life it's it's um oh man it's, it's and you just weird. yeah and you and you got to back to that the the kid that you've you've built him up to be at this mm. you know to this point uh, you got to back that he will go into school and go into the bigger communities that he meets as he grows up and attract yeah. similar types of people and hope that he doesn't what? you know roll with the wrong kids or anything but you got to back that you know like-minded it kids will hang out together it also you know i had flashbacks of my first day of high school at Wurrianda high school and you know it was emotional for mum and dad because i was the i was the only kid that didn't have an ankle bracelet and wasn't out on parole <laughs> so it was like that i didn't fit in straight away you know what i mean like we weren't growing plants up in the attic on the huh? side like a majority of my other students okay. were but it's right. um 
Well, that's why you had Lenny, isn't it? To try and hold on to those traditions. <laughs> Poor Lenny. Oh, it's, um, yeah, look, it's, your first day of high school is a day that you never, ever forget. Yeah. So I cannot wait to rock up there this afternoon in, in a pair of fishnet pants and really embarrassing. Okay. This okay. Afternoon. <laughs> no, rock up in an old swan's outfit. I reckon that'd be. <laughs> And what, and what, just take a hanger up the uh, principal's back or something? Yeah, and yeah. get one of those cardboard cutouts of that shot from New Idea of you coming out of the shower oh, yeah, that's from a Big Brother. Deal. That'll work really well. So, guys, thanks for having me on the show today. I'll see you tomorrow. And um... You've got to come back in, mate. You're on till nine. Oh, We've got another 45 oh, minutes. Just, just Tommy won't be back in, does he? Yeah, yeah hurry so up. I think you're just in the car park. That'd you're be great, Tommy. Right. <laughs> That'd be good. You didn't even drop him off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm just outside the studio. Good on you, mate. He'll be back in the studio. <laughs> It's time to brush up on your times table, Sydney. Maths was never my strong point. This is Fitzy and Whippers. Who wants to be a multiplier? Multiply your thrill in an instant with Instant Scratchit's new Multiply ticket range. Available in stores now. All right, we've got three rounds of multiplication, right? $1,000 up for grabs. Now, everyone sort of says that they're pretty good at their time tables. Oh, no, I don't. Mm. Although, Mum had a chart on the back of the toilet door, so whenever I was taking a seat when I was younger, I was meant to learn the times table. I obviously didn't poo enough, mate, because I do not know my times table. <laughs> Three sevens twenty one. Right, yeah, well, like up. Uh, uh, you, up, up to your twelve times tables in primary school, it was yeah. a big thing, and it was a bit of a competition between each other. So, what if I said to you guys, twelve times eleven? It's one hundred and eleven. No, one hundred twenty one. One hundred twenty one. Oh, geez, There's well a no, it's just when they get towards that twelve eight times. Time. Eight. 64. Well when the numbers well get big towards the end, I'm yes. gone. I start to get confused like you do then. Nine times six? Oh, 64. Oh, 54. 54, my favourite, of course. Uh, how we See, this, that? Is, this is the <laughs> tough one. Nathan, you're up first. Hi, Nathan. How are you going? Morning, boys. How are you? Yeah, good. Now, you're, you're the first multiplier this morning, but you need to pick a team member that you want to go up against, Nathan. Is there anyone on the team that you'd like to verse? I'll have to take on Whipper. Oh, oh okay. no, All right. no. Now, you've got to yell it out first. So be the first to yell it up. Uh, let yell it out. And the person that gets the third one correct. Oh, no. Actually, round one is worth $250. Here oh, we go. Geez, Come okay. on, Nath. Take a deep breath. As soon as you know it, yell it out. Here we go. Easy one. Whipper versus Nathan. Seven times four. 28. Well done. Whip, you're right. Okay. Come so, on, Nath. Nice. That means, that means we, we say William. goodbye to Nathan. Yeah. We now go to William in DY. Hi, William. Hi, guys. Okay, okay you're so up. So I you're... could wear, win $500 now. Yeah, okay, no. No, it's not you, mate. Okay, round two is for $500. William, you're up against Whippy. You ready to go? Yeah, go on, Okay, then. here we go. What is three times 12? 36. 36. Oh, not fast man. enough, Big on. Big So William's out on. now. This is our final one. This is the $1,000 question. Vanessa in Lycout. Hi, Ness. Hi. Oh, Ness, how do you go with your multiplication? <laughs> not good. Yeah, not well, good. you're panicking now because you've just heard how quick I am this morning. I am on, Ness. Good luck. Oh, okay, Vanessa, for $1,000 up against Whipper, first one to yell it out. Eight times eight. <laughs> Sixty-eight. No. Uh, Ness. Oh. Even counting on your fingers, you'd get there by now, Ness. Here's, oh, your, is... here's your phone. Oh, the thousand dollars is gone. Unfortunately, sixty-four. It's all over. It yes, is. you are oh, the winner, yes. mate. Sixty-four <laughs> is the winner. Did Ness. I win a thousand dollars? Ness, what was happening there? You were trying to get the calculator out, or had a bit of a blank? I was going to say 67. Oh, oh no. So close. It was closer than silence. Well, so that was a close. great way to kick off the competition. <laughs> All right. Early in the morning and it's Monday. Time for fun with some word play. Fun, fun, Monday. Yeah, yeah. Fun, fun, Monday. Hello. Fun, fun, Monday. Hi. Fun, fun, Monday. How's it going? Fun. Monday, Monday, guys. We give you the story, then we need your movie pun based on the story. This is... Um, 
a really mature one this morning because there was a teacher, uh, it was actually on a French lesson and this woman was um, learning French and how it works is that the, the teacher records questions in French and you then have to answer them or translate right. them so you can learn your French. And normally the questions that are recorded are about five or seven seconds long. Yeah, yeah. Then the student noticed that this recording was going for two minutes. So she realised that the teacher had accidentally hit record, left it recording, and then uploaded the full two minutes. What was interesting was the sound that was picked up at the end of the two minutes. There was actually no question, just one sound. This was it. Oh, no. Do you know what it's like? <laughs> it's like, um, do you know when you have someone in your car and you and you, someone's riding in your car, you give them a lift yeah. when they get out of the car and you've been waiting to do it? Hard to pass wind. It's just mm-hmm. that she would have thought that the mic was off. Everyone's safe. Oh, oh. And now I can actually let it out. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, all your students have heard it. Yeah. And it's now being turned into a movie and we need yes. a name for it. <laughs> we need a name for it. And it translates in French to fart. Um, so, we want your <laughs> fart-related puns as well. I'll go first. All right, I bet come you will. Yeah. 80s cult classic, Kafati Kid. Oh, oh yes. 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 yes! yes! Sarah! Put him in a body bag! Yep. <laughs> Put him in a body bag because it stinks. All right, I've got one for you guys. Um, I don't know if you remember the show movie Stink Panther. What? Pink oh, Panther. Pink Panther. <laughs> and Stink oh, Panther. So, so that's it's a bit not terrible. It's, <laughs> it's not terrible. Oh, it was your delivery was off. We'll save it with what you well, just I'll said. I'll go next then. All right, what do you got, mate? Can I get away with Raiders of the Loose Ass? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, if you can get away with that, I can do the Anthony Hopkins classic <laughs> Charts in Atlantis. Oh, what film is that? Charts in Atlantis. Oh. Right, yeah. okay. Very Smart, good. No, no Charts no also. Well, well, if you can get away with that, I can get away with the Jeff Bridges <laughs> classic Crazy Chart. Oh, my <laughs> chart. That is... All right, well, we're wow. pushing the boundaries this morning. But we need a title for that movie. Your best pun, Chantelle in the Cambridge, Ga- Cambridge Gardens. What's your best pun? Goodwill farting. Oh, oh that's well. farting. Oh, 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 it hunting? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Hunting and farting goes well, doesn't it? Does Maddie, it work? Maddie in Penrith, here's your drum roll. Arnold Schwarzenegger in the fartinator. Oh, oh the fartinator. Doesn't feel as clever. Oh, I, th- I thought at least <laughs> try to rhyme with it or something. Omar in Liverpool, here's your drum roll. Al Pacino in The Awful Scent of a Woman. Oh, oh The Awful Scent of a Woman. <laughs> that is very good. Oh, man. That is a great movie too. Terry on the Central Coast. What's your pun, Tess? The Fart and Furious. Oh, the oh, Fart yeah. and the Furious. Oh, yeah, yeah, they got it. Great franchise. They can really be angry good. too. Leone in Green Acre. Here's your drum roll. <laughs> Uh, Tara Reid in Fartnado. Oh, okay. Sharknado. It's Fartnado. I can see what you've done there. Yep. I like it. It's ki- last one. Sam in Norella. And what's your pun, Sam? The classic Farter of the Bride. A oh, Farter oh, of the Bride. That's a good movie. Mm, that's mine a Farter. Good. Sarah, that's... Ri- no, it's oof. an easy win for me. Omar in Liverpool. Omar! Omar, the awful scent oh. of a woman. Congratulations, Omar. you got a, a bottle of double chin-chin coming your way. Ooh-ah. Oh, uh, he's done it out Pacino. <laughs> James Blunt. Jeez, we love that man. I, we love him. He's Funny. one of the best interviews that we have on this show. Because you know what? For anyone who can take the piss out of himself as much as James Blunt, he does it so well. Yeah. I mean, he, we just spoke to him recently about his greatest hits album. This is what he had to say about it. I really wanted to call my greatest hits, greatest hit and songs I wish you'd heard. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> And it's coming out on Friday, which is the same day as Adele, so she must be breaking it. <laughs> um, He's so good. So you know all the controversy, controversy that's happening with Spotify at the moment and Neil Young. So Neil Young doesn't like Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan's podcast is on Spotify. There's all this stuff going on about vaccinations and misinformation. So Neil Young said, pull my music. Yeah. So Spotify pulled his music. Get rid of Joe Rogan wasn't or get rid good, of my music. It wasn't a good move for Spotify because they lost a lot of their share price, really? all this kind of stuff. A lot of people are blowing up, and they're saying, is there any other mu- musicians getting on board with this? Well, James Blunt yesterday tweeted... What did he tweet? Here we go. I've got to get it up. Sorry, I've done this. Because Joni Mitchell then followed as well. Yeah, Joni Mitchell pulled hers. She said, get my music off Spotify if Joe Rogan stays. 
James Blunt said, if Spotify doesn't immediately remove Joe Rogan, I will release new music onto the platform. <laughs> But then, <laughs> then the chief health officer in Victoria, Brett Sutton, you know the yep. good-looking yeah. guy that the girls like? He's tried to cash in on the James Blunt joke. Okay, what did he go but with? It doesn't work. He said um, only 38% of Victorians have had the booster. That means over 60% of that are, are at risk. He said, if we don't see more, I might ensure that James Blunt gets played on repeat on all public transport. Come on, Brett. James can do the joke. Yep. You can't do the joke. Yeah, unless it was your music, then I don't think the punch is really there. It doesn't work. Well done, does Mr. It? Blunt, though. Well done. What does he get paid, Joe Rogan? $150 million. For all his podcasts. What? Annually? No, 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 no. Deal? That was for all his back catalogue, and then I think he gets paid, yeah. My he God. Wow. He only gets paid 80 grand a year or something for the rest oh, okay. of the Just <laughs> trying to put a meal on the table. <laughs> so, He's still... getting ripped there. Okay, great. Loser. Get the meat and three veg on the table at the end of the day. Special moment. I took the boys over the weekend down to Hobart for the Great. first time to go and see Midnight Oil at the <coughs> at the Mona Foma <coughs> Festival down there. So Huey's already seen Midnight Oil. And I, I, I spoke about this on social media over the weekend. You know, with your kids, with your listening habits, obviously they're not into your music, everything that yeah. you're into, but... I put a lot of my music on in the car, and every now and then you hope that there is prick up Sarah yeah. and there's something that they really like. Oh, the boys have just started to get into Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, they yeah. love a bit of bridge, bridge over trouble water. water. <laughs> yeah, sound of silence. Uh, all the gear, they're singing along. It's a real hit. I don't know if your ears can prick up for that <laughs> because it's so slow. <laughs> it's a real hoot. Yes, it's a party. Um, so, uh, w- ACDC was one band, and I think kids. That's why the ACDC is so successful because. <laughs> It's actually, kids love, it's actually catchy, quite basic. Yeah. It's catchy, it's easy to sing along with. Midnight Oil was another one. And then when I showed them videos of Pete dancing and that, the boys were like, oh, wow. I thought, so I've got to take them. This is their last... Did they ever- think it was their dad on stage? Because you look a lot like Peter well, Garrett. Yeah. Or did you get drunk and start doing the dance that you do when we're at I Tuesday got lunch? Lenny on my shoulders awesome. a couple of times. Yeah. Lenny's only eight years of age, hey, and there Pete. were a couple of times where dad, he's like, Dad, he looks like you. He looks like you. <laughs> I know. He's a lot more talented than dad is. So we went down, and, and if anyone's been to the Mona Museum down in Tasmania, mm. it is unbelievable. I did some research. The guy that owns it... David Walsh. David Walsh. Right, he is. Well, he he says that he's got Asperger's himself, but he's like he is just addicted to this museum. He loves it. He's eccentric. He it cost over a hundred million dollars to build. Yeah, and apparently he loses money on it. But I didn't know this. I found out the way that he earns his money is that he's a punter. Yes. He's That's got, a system. He has a huge betting syndicate, Sarah. Oh, and how's sounds this? Deadly. He, he uh, one story that he said just before the Melbourne Cup in 2009, I was securing bills at the rate of five million dollars a month for the build at Mona, and he said to his mate who was in the betting syndicate, "I need more money, so we need to bet bigger." <sighs> and that year, they won 17 million dollars on the Melbourne Cup. Jeez. And he said, and he said that was just luck. But we bet a bit more because if I didn't, Mona wouldn't have gone ahead. I needed to pay Can the I bill. Can I ask a question? There's a certain wall in Mona. Yes. says, have you been there no, and you know I about haven't. the wall? No. Well, so the wall is um, a little bit graphic if you pay attention to what's on the wall because there's about a thousand different plaster moulds of female private parts. Yes. There's, ah. a, well, there's, a, there's a bit in Mona... That the whole family can go to, and there's yep. another little bit where just maybe the adults should go to. Did the boys but walk I, past the moulds? I, I didn't know, but my boys had run into that little <laughs> section, and they walked straight past that wall. Did they know what it was, though, that they were had, looking? Had no yeah, idea. Yeah, too little. Well, David Walsh, the guy that built Mona, he is mm. obsessed with sex and death. Yeah, sure. Okay. So there's a lot of that around in Mona, but it is amazing. If you get a chance, go there, right? So we went down there. There's a good friend of mine, Holly. Um, she lives down there now as well, and she picked us up and she drove us around for the weekend as well, which was awesome. But I, did, did, I don't know this. Right? There's people with different driving habits and she didn't even know that she was doing this, but she's in the car and she's one of these people that when she drives, she accelerates to the speed limit, Sarah, and mm. then just takes her foot off the pedal. And cruises. And then she puts her oh accelerator no. down. It's Stop, like start. she's doing it to the beat of a song and she has no idea she's doing it. But when you're in the car, I'm sick. not joking... You're going, 
And then you're going back. Oh, oh mate. I'd vomit. And that's yeah. how she, she goes, is. I've always dri- driven my car like that. The worst. It is. Yeah, it is I, I was actually starting to feel sick. Yeah, you do feel sick. A lot of taxi drivers do it, and I don't know why. And Would I do not know why. And it's just, mm, 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 and you're just jerking back and forth the entire time. It's, cr- but it's s- the worst. I had a mate that used to do that, but he used to he used to brake, accelerate past the speed limit, and then brake back down, and then accelerate past the speed limit, and then brake back down. Do you know down. what Lisa hates? I use cruise control even in the slowest areas. So I'll use cruise control in a 50 zone or a 60. That's pretty yeah, lazy. When you've got a car in front of you, it slows you down massively. Yeah, I know, but it's just the idea that I can have, I don't know, three, four seconds of just cruise control oh. makes me feel like I'm on the open road, man. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Do you know the other one? When I started driving, I just assumed that you used your left foot yeah. for your brake. Yeah and your right foot for your accelerator. Yeah, that's how manual cars are driven, isn't it? Well, Not yeah, you, you, yes, but I just thought it made sense. I got one foot for that pedal and yeah. I got the other foot yeah. for that pedal. Had no idea. Do you know the other one as well? It's just your right foot. I had a mate, I got into a car with a mate when I was younger and he had one of those knobs on the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. Now, they're f- oh, usually yes. for people... Disabilities. That, ...that have one arm. Yep. Right, and you use it... The thing is, he had two working arms. He so what do you got that for? He said, have you ever tried it? It's the best. For doughies. He had it installed, Sarah, <laughs> and he just drives around with the one arm the whole time and he can relax his left arm. How good is so that? So you don't need it. They're for people that don't have... Yeah, but have a look at this. Bang, and he slid the back out. Unusual driving habits. Brad in St Mary's. You got a story for us? Yeah, morning, guys. How are you going? Yeah, good, good, Brad. Um, yeah, so my mate... Uh, as soon as the car starts, well, as soon as he starts the car, the heater goes on three, and when he's driving, it's two fingers either side of the steering wheel. Oh, two oh. fingers. So, as in, he steers with only two fingers, not all five of each hand. Yeah. Because oh, if it slips, I mean, you're is, in trouble, yeah, isn't not, it? I mean, that's not the perfect grip for the steering wheel. It's as not your at dad all. used to say when you were learning, ten and two. You need to get two. one of those knobs. <laughs> I'll right. send you one of those knobs, Brad. Ty in Penrith, what's the weird way that your nan drives, Ty? Yeah, how you going, fellas? Hey, good. good. Yeah, so my nan, she's been driving me like this her whole life. She was just talking about it. She has one foot on the brake and one foot on the accelerator. <laughs> Does she? She's been driving richly like that her whole life. Can't be good for the car. Cannot. No, and does it make you lunge? Like, whoops, when well, you do it. That's the thing, you yeah. You want to be clear whether you're on the accelerator or the brake. If you've got a foot on both, oh. you're just going to be that's burning it out. dangerous if you ask me. Well, yeah, we did ask you know, you jerk both feet out once. What do yeah. you do? Very, very dangerous. <laughs> 18th birthday party over the road from me on the weekend. Saturday night was pumping. I don't want you around, mate. You know what? I didn't go to the party. Um, I kind of partied at home. you because, weren't invited. Uh, no, I wasn't invited. Hold up. So you were on your side of the fence celebrating someone I was across, else's 18th. I was across the street, Sess. Right. Lisa and I out on the balcony. Have a listen to this. This was the music I recorded on my phone Saturday night. It was thumping. Oh, a bit of dark, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Across the road, up the street, three houses. And I was like, honey, hold my beer. It was like I was at the Future Music what Festival. Did, what, did it go, what time did it go to? Uh, about 11.30 or so. Oh, that's yeah, respectful. Yeah. There was a wedding yeah, down at the yeah, White Bay yeah, Terminal yeah, yeah. on Saturday oh. night. The drum and bass was just oh. going through the house really? as well to you all hours. You haven't had a cruise ship for two years. I you know. get one wedding, suck it up. It's just way too loud. Man, I, I thought about dropping. About Calling the cops? Did you? Did you give no. I thought call? about turning up at the front oh. door. They had security on the gate too, and I thought security. Yeah, yeah thought about saying, to. "Hey, mate, I'm from 33. Let me go in for a beer." They would have loved it, you know, 18th, and then this guy. Hang on a minute, he's a bit older, but man, he can still party. Oh, Whippers here to do a tight five, everyone. Oh, okay. You guys want to play? <laughs> Get the beer bong out, guys. You guys, this old dude's gonna you give you it a go. You guys want to do riddle time? <laughs> I just want to play song, so song, song, song. Uh, there were a few adults at the party, and I don't know if this was their music selection, but I can imagine my mum does this a lot when music that's played on the radio these days or popular songs that were also popular when she was younger, she sits back almost crossing her arms and says, but this is our music. No, this was our music. Oh my Have gosh. a listen to them enjoying it now. This is our music. Abba kicked into gear, mate. Mate, man, Abba? For an 18th, I suppose it's generational, isn't it? Is there not a remix version, though, you'd let run? Come on. Oh, usually, what are the kids you know they, You know they there rolled there over a couple of times, too? Uh, gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah, that's what I mean. Remix ever. Yeah, and I was saying, give me a man after 7.30. Am I right, darling? we got to get to bed.
How are the kids oh. sleeping at this point? Mm, not great at this stage. <laughs> yeah. Not great at this stage. Stinks. One thing that hasn't changed, right? And we did this at, when we were going through 18th, and what a great time it is to. What have. did you do? You were in the backyard. Yeah, I just had a pool barbecue. Yeah. Set a barbecue at was home. Was Christine? Did she have a few and get on the dance floor? No, that she night? didn't get on the I dance floor. So no, she oh, yeah. did not. Your mates would have gone no. searching no, around no, the no, house. No, no. Mrs. Stifler downstairs. Oh, are you suggesting my yeah, mum? Yeah, no, entirely. I could yeah. spell it out more. You leave I think my you mum, get it. my eighteenth, and her bosoms out of this. Christine, do you know what hasn't changed? <laughs> this chant. I've. Mate, it hasn't changed. No. Like they still do that now. And I'm picturing this 18-year-old girl in front of her dad and everybody's going, yeah, a piss ball through and through. Was down, it? Down. Leno goes with the skull version, don't you? The footy skull. club. Skull, yeah. skull, skull. Yeah, that's the one, of course. Did Get we win? <laughs> no, we didn't, but that doesn't matter. Down, down, down. And Did you anyway, see? What, what, were they, what were they drinking? Cruisers? I don't know what, what, what they was were the going drink with. of choice, don't I? West Coast Coolers. You forget where they they are, fit. So you know what, that though? Crystal. <laughs> I then said to one of the neighbours... I said to the na- one of the neighbours the next morning, do you know they still do the, he's a piece of down, down, down. And she went, yeah, I wonder if they do the um, the John uh, Cougar Mellencamp, which is what we used to do. And I said, what's that? Oh. And she said, well, this is the drinking game we played. <laughs> we had to play the song Small Town. Every time they said Small Town, you had to take a sip. Every time they said Big Town, you had to take two sips. So you, oh, oh, God, Small Town. Oh. It's a pretty busy one. Oh, the song goes on. Small town. Here we go. <laughs> By the time the songs end, and that you can't walk. No. That is terrible. I've never done the John Cougar Mellencamp. Well, that's the only way you can get through John Cougar Mellencamp, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he calls himself John Cougar now. He's dropped the Mellencamp. Mm, I think that was a while ago. We were researching album titles. Yeah, we, we were. There was a lot of John Cougar. I mean, any other drinking games you guys played? What about the mm. one that you did we on did the clothesline? On a houseboat oh, Guna Fortune. Guna Fortune. We did that at uni a bit. How did that end up? Well, how do you Sculling reckon white, that end up? Sculling four white litres wine. of wine per bag and you spin the hill's hoist and when it lands on you, you just open your mouth. It's Look, terrible. They're, they're, they're not yeah. good. They're not good. No, and they're I, not. I think everyone has to experience a drinking game to learn that it's mm. not good for you yeah. and you, how you pull up the next day. Is, yeah, bringing yeah. up stomach acid is not Oh, fun. my God. That music was still going at midnight. I said to Lisa, let's play Spin the Bottle. She went to bed. I played it by myself. And, well, they, um, was, they had a pretty big hit out. Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel was in a part of a show called The Man Show oh, years and years right. ago before he did his late yes, show. and they'd end it with just women in lingerie jumping on trampolines. Yeah, which was a bit controversial. But one, one, one of the segments, and Tommy, I don't know, maybe 2022, but they used to do a interview with an American sporting legend but both of them the interviewee yeah. and the interviewer would have a hundred shots oh, you know, you know, you know, no. in a hundred, hundred minutes, minutes. Oh. have you ever tried and it then do the interview De Groot so, does it yeah. have you done it De Groot what the hundred, hundred shots, shots. yeah that the was 60s, the thing that uh, unfortunately led to a, a gent throwing the bucket of, of urine, oh, urine. because because oh. he was cheating <laughs> that's right uh, yes. and Not it a, is a hundred I mean look at listen, listen how many beers like, is it 30-year-olds talking like 18-year-olds. But it's it's one sip of beer every minute for 100 minutes, which doesn't sound like no, a lot. No. But it actually, yeah, after it about 45 sips, gets... How'd you go, Tom? You've done it, have you? I got to 73. Is that all? Thank you. And then, my, lunch, and then mm. my lunch came up. Well done, Tom. Oh, and, then, you? and then you... So the job interview <laughs> finished then. <laughs> and you got the job at Nova after that. <laughs> the Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com. .com.au